everyone, it's Miss Katie. I hope you're doing well and enjoying your time at home with your families. Uh, we miss seeing you guys, we miss seeing you at church, but we're praying for you and we're hoping to see you again soon. Well, today I'm gonna teach as usual for the preschool through first graders. And then Mr. Tyson will get on after me and put a video for the second through fifth graders. Um, and if you wanna follow along with us at home, you can print the worksheets up above. We also have packets of worksheets available at the church for the whole month of May, so you can pick those up anytime um, and follow along with us at home. And then remember, we're gonna have our memory verse videos that you can watch with your families um, from home and be memorizing new verses. Remember, we'll have um, prizes for those of you who have new verses memorized when we get back to church. Okay, well, really quick, we're gonna start our lesson. If you remember last week, we were talking about Cain and Abel. And so Cain um, and Abel were the sons of um, Adam and Eve. Remember, they had many children. We don't know how many, but Cain and Abel were two of the brothers, and Cain was a gardener. He grew fruits and veggies out of the earth. He would plant seeds and help them, watch them to grow, and they would grow up, and then he would harvest them and use them for food. And then Abel was a shepherd. Abel would um, take care of his flock of sheep. He would watch over them and make sure they were taken care of. And then they would use the sheep for probably clothing or for food. Um, and so both Cain and Abel were going to bring offerings to the Lord. And remember an offering was just a word that meant a gift. So they were going to bring these gifts to the Lord. So Cain brought his um, fruits and veggies that he had grown from the earth. And Abel brought the firstborn of the, his flock of sheep, so the first of his, um, the first that was born out of his sheep. And both of those gifts, gifts sounded nice, but we know that the Bible says God could see in their hearts, and God could see that um, Abel's heart was right before him, but Cain's was not. Remember, Cain did not have a good heart attitude, and so. Um, God wasn't very happy with Cain's offering that he had brought him. And Cain became very jealous and angry. And if you remember, he rose up against his brother and he took his life away from him. He killed his brother. That was a horrible, horrible, sad day. And so Cain was going to be punished. And the Bible says that God was going to send Cain out. He was going to become a wanderer on the earth. He wasn't going to have a home anymore. He was not going to have to spend the rest of his days wandering around the earth. And it says that the, fruit, the earth would no longer bring forth its fruit for him. Remember, he was a gardener and he um, had probably become very good at growing things and growing his fruits and veggies, but he no longer was going to be able to do that. It was going to be very difficult for him to find food to survive, to stay alive. Um, and so that was a very sad thing, but God had to punish Cain's sin. Um, and remember, we talked about how God hates sin. God is holy and he can't be around sin. He knows that our sin separates us from him. And so he has to punish sin. He does it because he loves us and he cares about us, not because he hates us, right? He knows that it separates us from him. So he punishes us because he loves us. Um, well, some people like to say that everyone is good, that we all have good hearts, and that someday everyone's gonna go to heaven. Everyone is just really good at heart. Um, but is that what the Bible says? Is, does the Bible say that everyone's good and everyone's gonna go to heaven? That's not what it says, right? Well, we're gonna read a little bit more today and find out what the Bible says about the hearts of man. So we're gonna read, this is in Romans, in the New Testament, Chapter 3, verse 23, it says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So in the beginning, was it just Adam and Eve and Cain who sinned against God, who disobeyed him? It wasn't just them, right? We know that after they sinned, after Adam and Eve sinned, we all are born into sin. And this verse in Romans, it says all sin, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That means that um, we are not holy as God is holy. And so that's a problem. That's bad news, isn't it? That we are sinful and our hearts are dirty and we can't be with God if he's holy and we have dirty hearts, right? That's bad news. Well, we're gonna see what else the Bible has to say in Jeremiah chapter 17, verse nine. This is back in the Old Testament. Chapter 17, verse nine says, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. 
who can understand it? So deceitful is like when you say that you are one thing, but you're actually something else. You're pretending to be something you are not. Um, so the heart is deceitful and, and sick. The Bible says that our hearts are like, it's like they're sick. Um, that's not a good thing, is it? That is some bad news. Um, so our hearts, the Bible says that our hearts are not good. We are not all good people. And we can't go to heaven if our hearts are dirty and sick, right? That's not a good thing. So how do we get to heaven if we have dirty, sick hearts? Um, well, let's see. Can we do a lot of good things? Can we um, maybe help an old lady cross the street? Or can we cook meals for people who don't have food? Um, is that gonna help clean our hearts? Is that gonna make it so we can go to heaven? Well, those are nice things, but that's not gonna make our hearts clean, is it? What if we do a lot of hard work? What if we do lots of chores, we wash dishes, and you take the trash out for your mom and dad, and maybe you clean your bedroom, um, and we work super hard, we do lots of good chores. Is that gonna make our hearts clean before God? That's not gonna make them clean, right? Um, what if we say lots of nice things and we compliment people? We say, you look really nice today, or we use kind words, or we pretend to be happy and joyful. Are those things gonna clean our hearts and make it so we can go to heaven? That's not gonna clean our hearts either, is it? What if we go to church every Sunday and every Wednesday? We never miss church. We go every chance we get, even when we don't feel like it. Is that gonna get us to heaven if we go to church all the time? Well, all of these things are good things, right? These are all good things that are nice things to do, but those won't get us to heaven, right? We can't earn our way to heaven. We can't do enough good things to clean our own hearts. Can you wash your own heart and make it clean? You can't, can you? Well, that's a problem. That's some bad news. What can we do then? How do we get to heaven? Well, let's see what the Bible says. I'm gonna read to you guys from John 3.16, and I know many of you at home know this verse by heart. So if you know it, you can say it along with me, okay? So John 3.16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, perish is a word that means um, die, but have, ever, uh, but have eternal life. Okay, so what does this verse say? How did God feel about the world? Did you catch what it said? It says, for God so loved the world. So even though we have sin in our hearts and our hearts are dirty, the Bible says God loves us. And what does it say? Who did God give to the world? It says he gave his only son. Who is God's only son? His name is Jesus, right? We know that one. Um, well, this is the gospel. This is the good news that God made a way for sinners to have our hearts cleaned and to go to heaven and be with him someday. He sent his son, Jesus. Jesus was fully God. He was fully man, and he lived a sinless life. He was punished on the cross for our sin, and when he um, rose again three days later, he died and was buried and rose again three days later, and when he did, the Bible says he defeated sin and he defeated death. And so now he says, I have a free gift for you. And all you have to do is accept it. So he gives us this free gift of salvation and having our hearts cleaned. And all we have to do is say, yes, Jesus, I want you to be my savior. I want you to make my heart clean. This is the good news. And it says at the end of this verse, it says that um, whoever believes in him, in Jesus, should not perish, but have eternal life. What does eternal life mean? Eternal life just means even though our bodies might die, we don't have to be uh, worried or afraid because we know that we're gonna go to heaven and have eternal life, which means we will be in heaven with God forever and ever. And it's gonna be a wonderful place. There won't be sin anymore. There won't be pain or death. There won't be sickness. There won't be anger. Any sad things happen um, that will happen there. It will be wonderful and perfect, just like God um, wanted it to be in the beginning. Well, that's the end of our lesson today. Um, next week, we're going to learn more. The Bible says that sin was going to continue to grow in the world and that God was very sad when he looked down on the earth to see how sinful man became. But we're going to learn about Noah and his family. We're going to learn about how God was going to punish the sin on the earth, but that he was going to save Noah and his family because Noah was righteous before God. Um, Noah looked down and he saw that, that or God looked down and saw that Noah was a righteous man. And so he was going to make a way to save his family. So we're going to learn about that next week. But right now, let's pray together. 
Lord God, thank you for this lesson from your word. Um, Lord, we see what your word says about the hearts of mankind, that we have dirty um, hearts that need to be cleaned and we can't clean them ourselves. But Lord, thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross so that he could save us from our sins and take away our sin, make our hearts clean so that we can be with you someday. Lord, I pray that if the kids um, listening haven't accepted you as their savior, Lord, that they would accept that free gift that you give them and trust you to be their savior so that they can have their hearts clean and be with you someday in heaven too, Lord. Please watch over them this week. Continue to um, take care of them and bless their time with their families. In Jesus' name, amen.